For the second talk, I'm going to talk about uh, text search protocols with simulation-based security. And this is a joint work with uh, Rosario Genara and uh, uh, Jeff uh, Sorensen. So uh, the classic uh, text search problem, or pattern matching as we call it, is basically we are given a text. So if you think of it as a large database and uh, a small pattern or a keyword search. And uh, uh, the goal is to find all um, uh, the, the, the text location where the patterns appears in the text or in the database. Uh, when you consider a secure version of this problem is that, uh, uh, as you can imagine, one party is, is, has, uh, is given the database and the other party is basically tries to search uh, the database of, uh, of, of the other party. And uh, it is not supposed to learn anything but uh, uh, the text locations. This problem has... Um, many, many, many applications also, uh, in particular when we want to compare uh, sensitive data. For instance, if you want to compare DNA strings, which is highly sensitive because it gives information, medical information that you don't want to reveal. Um, you can see even, even when you search Google, uh, Google uses the information of, of, your, of your keywords in order to uh, to uh, uh, determine the ads that she wants to place in the web page that you see and for other matters. So, so even in this case, you can think of some, um, some privacy notion that you would like to or hope to achieve in this case. Um, so the, there aren't many work in, in works in this, uh, uh, for this problem. Um, one particular paper is a paper by uh, uh, Troncoso, Kaisenbacher, and Selig, who, um, who basically showed how to solve this problem uh, in the semi-honest setting uh, using uh, oblivious automata evaluation, which I'm going to uh, define a bit later. And, uh, um, and Another paper uh, by myself and uh, Yuda Lindel, we, we, show we showed how to solve this problem uh, uh, in a limited uh, um, a notion of with a limited notion of security with one side simulation, which I'm going to define soon. Uh, so we used uh, the same ideas from the previous uh, talk on uh, oblivious PRF, uh, but it's definitely not clear how to extend this solution for the malicious setting. So I'm def not going to talk, I already talked about our setting and model in the previous talk. This is the same, uh, the same setting. Uh, we, ha we are talking about a malicious adversary whose behavior is arbitrary and uh, is computationally bounded. And uh, our uh, proof uh, shows uh, how to achieve full simulation. Um, just a quick overview, already uh, said what's a semi-honest adversary, which means that we do not assume anything. We assume that he follows the protocol specification, but uh, he tries to uh, uh, examine the message in messages in order to learn some additional information that he should not, should not learn in an in honest uh, uh, execution. Uh, just uh, one thing regarding one-sided simulatable. Um, this means that we don't know how to simulate to construct simulators in, in a sense of ideal real paradigm uh, notion that I talked before for both corruption cases, only for one case. And for the other case, which in, in this uh, uh, context uh, uh, I'm, concern, I'm considering parties that do not receive output, we only know how to guarantee privacy, meaning that it is this party, this corrupted party, does not learn anything about the other party's input but we don't know how to guarantee correctness or other properties. So this is a much more restricted notion of security. Just to uh, get you into um, um, our protocol, I'm going to present another uh, much simpler protocol um, that does not work for the malicious case. So uh, what can we do here? Bob can build a matrix of size 2 of M uh, as follows, record that M is the size of the keyword search, the pattern. So basically, um, he encrypts bits of zeros and one. 
in the following sense. If the bit, the, the, the bit that he, he observes uh, equals uh, 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 the bit zero that he looks at, he sends the encryption of zero. Otherwise, he sends the encryption of one. Just using, showing an example would be much simpler. You can think of the first line uh, correspond to zero and the second line correspond to one. So basically, uh, in the first line, you would send zero, zero, one, which is exactly the pattern. You can think of sending the pattern and the complement of the pattern. So how does it give us a, a solution, a secure solution? So this is a scary um, formula, just... Um, Using an example would be much more simpler. This is the text, and Alice now observes the first three uh, um, bits, and she goes to she, she she goes to the table that she received from from Bob and just takes the value that corresponds to the bits in the text. So she takes zero zero, which corresponds to the first uh, two bits in the text, and then one. Okay, this is the the the, uh, the, the second line, which corresponds to the third bit. And now she adds them together and some, I mean, multiply by some masking. And uh, this still uh, stays uh, equal to zero. And when Bob decrypts it, he, he learns that there is um, a match in the first location. If you see, uh, when we consider the second text location, we will not get a match because uh, basically it will add up to one. So this is a very simple uh, protocol. Just to, to illustrate it, however, um, it works for the semi-honest and even for the one-sided simulatable, but we definitely don't know how to extend it for the malicious because we don't know how to prove that Alice indeed conducted her computations according to some well-defined text. Uh, this is much more, even much more simple than the protocol I, I told you uh, in the prior work of myself and the Uda Linda uh, that also achieves the same uh, notion of security. So um, how do we switch to the malicious setting? We need a different, uh, a different technique. So uh, we basically took uh, the KMP algorithm, which I'm going to uh, explain, and um, showed how to uh, evaluate it securely. So the KMP algorithm takes the pattern and uh, tra transforms it into an automata. So what is an automata? A, qu a quick definition. It's a tuple of five elements. We have Q, which is the set of states which includes the initial state where the computation starts from and a set of uh, uh, um, accepting states. We have the alphabet, which in this talk is going to be binary, although all the results or the protocols can be extended for the uh, arbitrary case. And we have delta, the, uh, the transition uh, function, which basically have um, a current state and uh, an alphabet character and gives me uh, the next state which I need to go to. This is just um, the um, figure. Um, you can see that Q0 is the initial state. And if I, I see one, then I go to Q3, and Q3 is an accepting state. So the automata accepts one. If I see 0, 0, also I get to Q, I go to Q2, which also accepted by the automata. But 0 does not, is not accepted by the automata, for instance. So Considering this, uh, uh, transforming it into a secure version, you can already guess, we have two parties where one party holds the decryption of the automata and the other party has the input. And the goal is to learn, uh, or the goal for Bob is to learn whether the automata accepts or rejects this, uh, this string. Not even learn the, the state that the automata um, ended in, only whether it accepts or rejects. So these are, the, again, the security requirements. Alice should not learn anything about uh, Bob's input to the automata, and Bob definitely should not learn anything but the evaluation on X. Uh, so this was also considered uh, in the past. So um, there is the paper by Ishai and Paskin who show how to obliviously evaluate any branching programs where automata is, is, is a special case of this uh, model, in this model of computation. Uh, but they considered a different model, 
were in their model, uh, they wanted the communication to be restricted uh, uh, to the uh, amount that is proportional to the size of the input, to the size of X, independent of the description of the automata. And, uh, and therefore, they can only talk about privacy or security for semi-honest. Our results for, uh, in this context is show how, to show how to compute or how to evaluate automata uh, in the presence of malicious adversaries with full simulation. Um, just a, a few words on motivation. Although our initial motivation was how to compute or how to solve the text search problem, um, this uh, uh, functionality can be uh, useful in, in other applications. For instance, uh, it is interesting to see whether the solution can be generalized for uh, stronger notion models of, of computations. As I mentioned, branching programs and other models. And uh, the automata itself can be used. Uh, we think that we can use it to verify correctness of programs. These are the motivations. And uh, let's see the KMP, te the KMP techniques. So this is a beautiful algorithm from 77 that solves uh, pattern matching. It's very, the most famous, I think, the most famous algorithm in pattern matching. So basically, uh, here, um, um, the algorithm takes the pattern and transforms it into an automata in the following way. So for instance, if the pattern is 0011, then I have, we have a single path that leads to an accepting state. Okay, this is the 0011. Now, every time that we basically encounter a mismatch, let's see how to construct the, the automata using an example. So, for instance, let's assume that this is the text, and we started to go over the, uh, the, uh, the automata to uh, evaluate the automata, and we had 001, so far so good, and now we encountered a mismatch. Okay, we uh, saw zero instead of one. So essentially, uh, you would think that the automata will bring me back to the initial state, but this is not the case here. This is how the automata saves and, and evaluate the entire text in, in linear time, because it takes me not to the initial state, but he remembers that he saw zero, and he practically thinks where's the best place I can take you Think of it that he tried to uh, find the largest uh, prefix of the pattern that matches the suffix of what he saw so far. So he already saw a zero, and he knows, he remembers that the, the pattern starts with a zero. So there is no sense to go over zero again. So basically, he goes to the place where he already remembers that he saw zero. So you can think of it. So this, these are the other uh, edges that, um, that, that gives me the, the, the automata. Basically, this is a simple uh, keyword, so all the zeros take me to the same place, and the one takes me uh, to the beginning. But essentially, if you want to, to, to say how to compute this uh, automata, you, this, this is very simple, using O, M, o of m squared uh, uh, computation, by essentially uh, comparing the pattern against in itself for every shift. So for every shift, I, 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 I look for the, the largest uh, substring that match. So if I, I, I was starting at the beginning in the first location, and now I encountered, I encountered a mismatch as before, so a one instead of zero, basically I, uh, I, I compute what would be uh, already uh, the largest prefix of the pattern that I already saw, in, uh, uh, assuming that I started in the second location. And this was the zero, basically. So computing the automata would be very efficient, assuming that the keyword is very small. So if you want to construct a, or consider secure a, a computation of this functionality, uh, the eye level idea would be, okay, so um, one party has the automata, the description, the, the pattern, it can construct the, the KMP automata, it can encrypt it, and send it to, to Alice. But uh, um, this does not work entirely because um, the parties do not learn any, any, any intermediate computations along the way. So at one shot, Bob cannot compute, uh, c the party cannot evaluate the automata. 
but we are not allowed to reveal any intermediate information. So the solution for the semi-honest protocol that I um, talked before is very nice and very, very simple. Basically, they mask the automata, where the party that Alice, who has the automata, has the masking, and she, she basically shifts the automata, the state, the transition function in the automata according to the masking. And now the party just uh, uh, engaging in oblivious transfer execution where uh, uh, Bob learns the, the next state. She doesn't even need to send the encryption of the automata. This doesn't work for the malicious. And uh, at least efficiently. And in order to deal with malicious adversary, we need to do something else. So basically, in every iteration, the parties, or at least the, the parties Bob, would learn the encryption of, of the evaluation of some partial substring of the, the, of the pattern. Okay? So in, in iteration, in the i iteration, he knows the evaluation on PI until uh, on P1 through PI. And, uh, uh, um, and the next stage, the next stage would be to select. So, if we, I'm going to show an example, but just a high level, we have the transition, uh, uh, we have the, the, the transition matrix. He can select from this transition the column that corresponds to the next bit in the pattern, and then the parties should obliviously evaluate the next state. So, how basically do we do it? Okay, so again, think of the transition table as a table with three columns. So the first column is the current state. Remember, I'm in, I'm in specific state, and I see either zero or one. So one column corresponds to zero, and the other column corresponds to one. So, of course, the table is encrypted uh, using some homomorphic encryption. And um, upon reaching the i iteration, we already said that Bob knows the evaluation on P1 through PI minus 1. Now they want to, or the parties want to evaluate the following, uh, uh, the evaluation for the following bit. So let's assume that um, um, he knows we have the column. Bob picks the column for the corresponding, so he knows the bit PI, right? It's either 0 or 1. So let's assume that C prime is the column for this bit. Now he had, there is the current state. And he has the encryption of the uh, current evaluation. So he basically uses the homomorphic encryption to subtract the current state from the, 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 the encrypted current state that he has. And this gives me two columns. Okay? So he has the current state columns, which he subtracted the partial evaluation that he had so far, and the columns that correspond to the next bit. Now he has to permute these two columns. He has to use the same permutation for these two columns, okay? And to send it to Alice, which masks it and decrypts it for Bob. This essentially gives Bob the uh, encryption. I, I didn't say all the details, okay? But this essentially gives Bob the evaluation for the next bit. And um, how do we use it for, uh, for pattern matching or text search? So if, if you saw so far, we, the number of, of rounds is proportional to the size of the string that we need to evaluate over the automata, which, is, which are bad news in, in our case because the database is, is evaluated in the automata and could be very large. So we use this trick to break the, the, the text into uh, um, substrings of length 2 of A and evaluate each substring independently and in parallel. So if I can show you in the example, you, you take the text and you break it into a substring that overla overlap with M bits because there could be a match exactly in the overlap. And now we evaluate the automata on every substring of length Q of M in parallel. And this gives me total work of O of N times M. And, uh, uh, but the run complexity now decreased to O of M. So I know this, the run complexity is not constant, as we would hope for, but uh, in, in, in the context of text search, it is not 
since they're not bad news because usually the, the, the keyword or the pattern is very short. Think of words that you search in, in search engines. And um, just for, uh, for summarizing, um, just from the area of pattern matching, there are many, many, many uh, interesting and motivated problems in the context of privacy and secure communication that are uh, um, still waiting to be, um, to be solved. And um, just one assumption or conjecture that I have is that uh, uh, for if you are familiar with suffix trees or suffix array, and you're familiar with the algorithms that are used there, uh, my conjecture is that these are not, cannot be used in, in, in the context of secure computation because of um, the inter intermediate null, uh, uh, computations they had uh, there. And so this is one uh, direction. And uh, another direction is to use or extend the solution for the oblivious automata evaluation to push it further uh, either to other model of co models of computations or extend it in a sense that instead of uh, using the, um, uh, the comparison, right? So for, na for now, uh, the edges, we only compared the edges, we only uh, compared whether we have zero or one, but we can extend it. You can think of that the edges has some, some function, maybe linear, maybe nonlinear function, and Perhaps we can use it to, to uh, verify correctness of, of programs or other um, applications. I don't know. I'm sure there's uh, many interesting questions in this area. Um, and that's it. Question? Thank you. Thanks.